I know you're stuck at home just as bored as I am. And I know you're also probably here because you saw this TikTok. Okay, I'm bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the house and I'm in the house bored. Bored in the motherfucker in the house bored and I'm bored in the motherfucker in the house bored. Bored in the house, bored in the house bored. Bored in the house, bored in the house bored. I'm bored in the motherfucker in the house bored. Let's learn how to sew a two piece set. To make this outfit, I used a thrifted midi skirt that was a few sizes too big for me, but I really like the print of the fabric. What is an acceptable shortness length? I like very short. Go here for good measure. Can you see that? That length leaves enough space for seam allowance. This is no exact science. I'm following the line kind of. I'm giving a little bit of extra room because I'd rather it be slightly longer. Uh, he's the only cut once. That's what girls should learn to do with their hair. <laughs> True. You know, like all those girls on TikTok cutting their own bangs. It's like, why would you go so short? Or the <gasps> fabric's thicker. So this is what we're at. It looks kind of small. So we basically have the same amount of fabric for the little mini skirt that we do for the top. So that's honestly like a good amount of fabric. We can do a lot with this. So a few decisions have been made. The zipper's gonna go down the back because there's actually three seams in the skirt, which is kind of weird, but like I guess makes sense. So then there's gonna be no seam in the front. What I decided is that instead of a dart, I just did a whole seam that went down the length of the skirt because it was too wide at the bottom. So now it's a little bit more form fitting. And then I'll do a little a little rolled hem. Instead of just folding it over, you fold it over twice. So then you get no raw edges on the inside. Current dilemma. The slit that I want to add to make it look like one of these brandy skirts. I just don't know how high is appropriate, but I'm planning to go up to where this blue line is, which looks really high right now, but you have to remember that an inch on the bottom here is going to be hemmed anyway. Oh, I also found a ruler, big news. Oh yeah, so we're, we're getting pretty technical. This is a five inch tall slit currently, but it'll really be like a four inch tall slit, which is really like this big, that's really kind of small. I'm very excited to announce we have a new addition to our floor. Say hello to the tiny ironing board. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press the um, little slit and then also the waistband. This is just gonna make it easier to sew. For what I wanna do for the top, I actually had a dream, uh-oh. Maybe don't iron directly onto plastic fabric. Love that for me, love that for me. You know what? The hem's like a little wonky, but like this looks like a cute skirt. Like I would buy this. It hits my waist right where I want it to. I had to take in uh, a little bit more. Now it's a good length, rolled hem. This is about four inches, maybe three and a half inches tall. So it's like nothing too scandalous. <laughs> At this point in the video, you may be asking yourself, why does she have so many beds? Well, college got put online for the rest of the semester and at home, I would be sharing a room with my sister. My sister's 16, I'm 19. I have a response share room. So I made the executive decision to move into the guest room in my house, which just so happens to have four beds in it. This room does have maximum sleepover potential. Maximum. And now it's time to make the top some little straps and then it's going to be a bow in the back so to make the top you're going to take the leftover fabric from the bottom of your skirt and separate it into three parts the top part is going to be the bulk of your shirt so what i like to do is hold it up to me and see where i want the shirt to hit and then i added an extra inch to it if your shirt does not already have a hem on one side you should add an extra two inches to account for seam allowance the next section you're gonna cut out is for the ribbon in the back of your shirt to tie the bow. I used about four inches of fabric, but you can adjust it depending on how much fabric you have. The third and final section is for the top straps. This is actually what we're going to be sewing first, so it's really important. What you're gonna do is take about two inches of fabric, that's the amount I use to account for half an inch of seam allowance on either side, and you're going to pin the right sides of the fabric together. That means the shiny side of my lining and the pattern side of my fabric. 
proceed to sew the straps with a half inch on either side. Once you've done this, you're gonna end up with a long tube. To make it the right way, what you're gonna do is take a safety pin, pin it to one side of the bottom fabric, and then start wiggling the safety pin up through the little sleeve that you have created. If you've ever sewed and had to like turn it inside out, then you're gonna know how annoying this is because I only had a safety pin that was like this big and this is how long my straps are. I turned the strap inside out and I just plugged in my iron because when you turn it inside out, it looks like a tube like this and we don't want, oh, here's my little safety pin that I was telling you guys about. See how tiny that is? Straps. So now I'm gonna try on what I have of the top to figure out where I want the straps. But like, she's coming together. The next step is attaching the straps to the shirt. First, you're gonna take your largest section of fabric and you're going to divide it into three parts. You're not cutting, you're just gonna mark where the center third of your fabric is because at the edges of the third, you're gonna attach the straps. Next, it's time to cut your one long strap tube into two pieces. So just fold it in half and cut halfway. Anyway, what I'm doing is I'm putting the right sides together and then in between the right sides, I'm putting the straps so then when I turn it right side out, I don't have to sew the straps on because they're already in there and then there's no hemline. So like when I turn it, it'll be like, like obviously there's pins in here right now, so it looks a little funny, but like no hemline. But you're not sewing the whole top. We're only doing that center third section. Like always, you're putting both right sides of the fabric together, pinning the wrong sides, but the only thing that's different here is in between the right sides of the fabric, we're also including the straps. So my plan worked actually really well. Oh, she cute, like look. But what I'm figuring out now is the taper. The bottom here is already like hemmed, it's the bottom of the skirt, so it's like hemmed really nice. It's got like a whisper stitch and all that stuff. So what I've decided is that I'm not gonna do like a triangle taper for the bow, like right angle triangle, because I wanna keep this hem at the bottom. So basically right here, it's just gonna start going down, like in a triangle. To determine the angle of this taper, I measured from the edge of my strap straight down to the edge of where the ribbon would meet the shirt. And then the straps in the back will look like the straps in the front, and I'll show you my bow pieces coming together. Now it's time to sew together the ribbon pieces of your shirt. Same as always, put the right sides of the fabric together and then sew a half inch from either edge. Top is coming along. We got the straps, I think I already showed that, but I also pinned the bows on and sewed them together. I'm doing the same thing that I did in the front on the sides now with the straps and I'm really hoping that it works. I have pinned the right sides of the fabric together. I have under here the straps also pinned so it'll look nice like the front. I cut off the excess fabric for the taper, leaving an extra inch for seam allowance just in case. Yeah, the bow just needs to be added. Considering adding a little dart right here, it's time to pin the ribbons on. I had so many pins on this blanket, it's actually a danger to myself and others. I just did the last stitches as far as I know. I definitely have some loose threads that I need to cut still. I'm gonna press the seams and then try it on. I'm excited. I like to try on my projects throughout the whole sewing process so then if I have a problem, I notice it earlier. But there's also a lot of final adjustments that can be made. Like the last time you try it on, you're like, oh, I wanna take in the skirt a little bit more. Or this top needs darts, which is what I ended up doing. But before I did that, I wanted to go show my parents because my mom had been watching me sew all day and was very curious. So this is her reaction. She said, oh, it's stunning. I love the uh, bow. Yeah, you do need, are you gonna put darts I'm over here darts right just here. because of a little bit of puckery? Oh, turn around, let me see the back. <gasps> Oh, Betsy, let me, let me step over here so I can get the hole. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So as my final adjustment to this top, I decided to add darts. I'm sure you can look up a better tutorial on how to do darts, but I just added two two-inch darts on either side of my top 
you basically just draw a triangle and fold it in half and you just want the pins on either side to match up. So there's one of my darts. Um, I'll deal with the lining later. That's not nearly as important. Uh, I just made sure that the ends of the top line up, but I'm gonna add this dart. So this is the final set. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks so cute. I think it'll look better on me when I'm a little tanner. Like for making it up as I went along, could be a lot worse. So I'm resurrecting this channel. If I could take you up in paradise on the ocean, if you would tell me I'm the only one that you love, life could be a dream, sweetheart.